Welcome everyone. I'm Diana Sturck uh, from Merton Chamber of Commerce. and I'm here with my colleague Caroline Cook and we're really pleased to uh, have put on this Reach Out and Connect. This is our series of webinars that we initiated right back at uh, the start of lockdown down one and we're really pleased to be putting on one that we did uh, actually in lockdown one with uh, Merton Council, with uh, David Kepler and Sarah Murtar from the Business Rates uh, Department, and then Dave, um, Helen Clark and uh, I think her colleague Maria Dane is joining us, who are from Regulatory Services, who will talk about um, really the trading constraints under lockdown too. So this is all a bit deja vu because we've been here before, but there are now additional grants that are being distributed to local authorities to support businesses. And the way that we have been working with Merton Council, Love Wimbledon, the South Wimbledon business area and the Willow Lane, uh, business Improvement District is really to support businesses collectively as much as we can. So coming together to deliver these um, short, sharp webinars to you, but to provide you the access, if you like, to the information that's coming out from the, con the council and also to ask your questions. So what I would suggest that you do, because we are going to obviously hear quite a lot of uh, information is if you put your questions in the chat box as they come to you. Uh, if we've got time, I will come to you individually to cover those. If we're pressed on time, then I might have to represent your question because uh, obviously that saves us a few minutes here and there. And then also to say if you can keep your microphone on mute as you've seen we've muted you all until you speak because that obviously saves a lot on the playback that uh, tends to happen in these meetings if there's a lot of participants. So we're going to start uh, first of all with um, a summary of the new grants that have come out as a result of actually us moving into tier two and then into lockdown two so I think it's quite complicated. Uh, so I'm pleased that David Kepler, who's the head of uh, business rates at Merton Council is here because David is very good at uncomplicating things, I think, David. So uh, welcome to you. And uh, I'm gonna hand over straight away to you. And then after David has finished, we will move to Helen Clark uh, as the commercial services uh, manager in the regulatory services team to take us through some points there and then we'll take your questions. So over to you David and welcome. Okay, thank you Diana. Morning everybody. Um, just before I start, if, if as I'm going through um, my presentation or talk, if you have any questions please post them and my colleague um, who's also on the line hopefully will be able to answer any of the questions that you've got. So I just want to go through the new different grant schemes and as Diana says they are a little bit complicated the names all seem to run into one another um, I'll go into a little bit of detail about the different ones that I think are mainly going to affect Merton businesses so first of all I'm going to start with uh, the grants for the second national lockdown the actual title is local restriction support grants closed addendum Merton have been given just over three million pounds. So the government have identified that they think we'll need to be spending that much in grants um, because they've done an analysis on the business uh, codes on the valuation officer list. So they know the types of businesses we've got and they've done an allocation of three million pounds. Now, this scheme is very prescribed. And if we spend over that amount of money, we will receive additional funding from the government. In short, it's for businesses that um, have been mandated to close by government and include non-essential retail, leisure, personal care, sports facilities and hospitality businesses. On our website, there is, on the application form, there is a link to the government website that details those businesses mandated to, uh, to close. And perhaps my colleague, if she gets a minute, she can put a link to that government website so that you can see those. This is only for businesses that pay business rates and the amount of funding that you get for the 28 day close period is dependent on the rateable value. 
Uh, if the rateable value is 15,000 or below, for the 28 day period, you'll receive 1,334 pounds. If the rateable value is between 15,000 and less than 51, it's 2,000 pounds. And exactly 51 and above, it's 3,000 pounds. We went live with this scheme on Wednesday. Um, there's a, there's a, a live application uh, and information on the scheme available on our website. We went live, I think, Wednesday afternoon. We've already received 187 applications. We've managed to pay 29 businesses already, although with the three-day BAX process, I doubt that any of them have got their money yet, but the first one should be getting them on Monday. Um, and just for information, that equates to just over £49 million. I'm expecting in the region of 1,300, possibly more applications for this, uh, for this grant. One thing that we're seeing already um, from applications is that businesses aren't providing us with the information that we're asking for. So if I can just stress now what we want um, or what we require so that you can make it easier for us and we don't have to keep emailing back to businesses asking for more information. So what we're doing at the minute, we're working through the applications as they come in. If all the information is there, we're paying immediately. And then within three days, the, the payment will be in the bank account. Where the information isn't there, we're having, to, we're having to email back and that's just delaying that payment for you all. So just to clarify the information that we need, we need a copy of the bank statement that you want the grant payment made into, paid into, and that needs to show the account number and the name on it. Where it's not a limited company, we need proof of ID for that sole trader or, or the business. We need a personal reference, such as a national insurance number, tax reference number, VAT code. We need evidence of occupation. So that would be something like a, a utilities bill or a recent uh, rent bill that you've, or a rent invoice that you've had to pay. And then finally, evidence that the business is still trading or was trading up until uh, it was mandated to lockdown. So for example, it might be a sales invoice or, or a copy of a of an appointment letter that you've made or recently made um, within the last month or so. So those requirements uh, are put on us by government. That's what we're asking businesses to provide. Um, I think one thing that, that's changed on this second phase of grants is the government want much more information from us about businesses that are applying for the grants. You'll see if you, if you do go on the, uh, if you do make an application, we're asking the type of business, we're asking how many staff you have, things like that. So we're actually gathering more information um, because the government want this data. So as I say, we're receiving applications, we're paying them where we can. Um, and I would say, if you are gonna apply, please just take a bit of time and make sure that you're providing all the information that we've got that will enable us to pay you quicker. Okay, that's hopefully the easy one. Uh, if we move on now, uh, I'm going to move on to the grant scheme that the government called Local Restriction Support Grant Open. This is a, a support grant for when authorities are in tier two. And again, well, so the government have identified how many businesses they think uh, will be eligible for this and given us a part of funding. This, for, this, for this grant scheme, we've got £360,000. Um, again, the amount of award is based on uh, the rateable value. The slight difference with this grant scheme is the government are calling it a discretionary scheme because there is a small element of discretionary money that they've given us. And therefore, if we pay over the 360,000, the council have to meet that shortfall. Because it's a discretionary scheme and it's tier two and it's 360,000 pounds, the council will need to go through a formal decision-making process. And I'll, I'll sort of pick up on that in a minute when I move on to the, the large discretionary screen. And what that means is the council's cabinet will be making a decision on the policies for both this scheme and the additional restriction grants, which I'll come on to, as I say, that's the big four million pound discretionary scheme that we've got. Because they're both discretionary schemes, the amounts of money involved, as I say, cabinet have to make that decision. Cabinet isn't sitting until the 7th of December. So the time frame for um, having this scheme up and running, and it's not just influenced by the cabinet, although that is key, uh, the key part for the authority, 
We're also reliant on our system supplier coming up with a solution for this. Um, cabinet's on the 7th of December. There's a seven day call in to that decision, which brings us to the 14th of December. I'm hoping that we can go live around the 16th of December for this scheme. So it's for those businesses affected, or I think that the guidance says severely affected by tier two restrictions. There is a link on our website to the government guidance. We're drafting a policy to be agreed by, um, by cabinet. And, the, and I suppose the complexity with this scheme is um, it's in place for a little over two weeks prior to the national lockdown. I think in London, we went into tier two restrictions, if I recall the 17th of October. So this scheme will be eligible from the 17th of October up until when we went into national lockdown on, oh, I've not got the date to hand, 4th of, 4th of November, 5th of November. So this scheme is prior to national lockdown. What might complicate things is when we come out of national lockdown, what tier of restrictions will London go back into? If we go back into tier two, then this scheme will then come into play again. So we could be in a position where we've given people, we've given businesses grants for the national lockdown. We give them a grant for the two weeks or so prior to the national lockdown for tier two, lock, for tier two restrictions. And then when we come out of national lockdown, if we go back into tier two restrictions, then this scheme is applicable again. And that's why there's, a, there's going to be a delay in, uh, or another reason for the delay is our system supplier is trying to come up with a solution that enables us to just have one application where we can keep making payments to those qualifying businesses. I didn't really intend to say much about one of the other schemes, which is the local restriction support grant for closed. In effect, that's tier three. So again, that can come into the equation. If we come out of lockdown and we're into tier three restrictions, or if any time in the future we move into tier three restrictions, all these grant schemes are interchangeable. Um, as Diana says, it's very complicated. We're doing our best to come up with a, an approach that will make it as easy as we can for businesses. But the downside of that is it's likely to delay the implementation of this tier two uh, grant scheme by probably a couple of weeks. As I said, I don't think this is going to be up and running until around about the 16th of December. Okay, that's the tier two and tier three that I've touched on. Perhaps the grant that maybe most businesses will be interested in is what the government are calling the Additional Restrictions Grant, or ARG. This is solely a discretionary grant scheme given to the local authority to help and support businesses. It's £4,130,000 we've been given. This scheme needs to be in place from when we come out of lockdown until the end of March 22. So not March next year, the following March. So this grant fund of £4 million, £4.1 million, is to support businesses in Merton from now in effect to the end of March 22, 15, 16 months. Because it's four million pounds, again, because of the council's um, uh, uh, processes and, and a role in, in sort of making decisions on, on money, on a, um, on a monetary value this high, it is a cabinet decision. So a report is being drafted for cabinet, as I said, 17th, uh, sorry, 7th of December, the same as the tier two one, Hopefully a decision will be made, well, I'm sure a decision will be made then on, on the grant scheme. We then have a seven day call in. I'm hoping that we can go live with this scheme around about the same time, 16th of December. So the plan is come the 16th of December, we will have two new grant schemes available for businesses. One around tier two and one around this new discretionary, uh, discretionary scheme for 4.1 million pounds. Um, the government have provided guidance on this, which we've taken into account. Uh, one of the things I picked up is that, that you know, they recommend authorities should be trying to support those businesses that haven't had any help at all so far. Um, that has been noted and that uh, will be considered by cabinet. I can't say at the minute what Merton's policy will be. Um, I think it's likely that we will look to spend some of the four million pounds as soon as we can. 
we will then hold some back and have second and possibly even a third phase throughout the next year, 14 months. So that it, we can support businesses throughout the whole 15 month period. It is about helping to sustain businesses as well. That's the, uh, the, the uh, discretionary scheme. The final scheme that probably I'll just touch on probably only affects one, maybe if there's more than one business out there that we're not aware of. It's a, it's a grant scheme that is aimed at supporting businesses that were originally closed down back in March and are still yet to open. And I think the examples that they give are, um, if I can find the guidance, um, discotheques, nightclubs, um, sexual entertainment businesses, things like that. So we're trying to identify those businesses in the borough that would meet that criterion and we'll target them ourselves uh, as, as best we can in contacting them to apply for that grant. Diana, is there anything that I've not perhaps made clear? I know, I know I've gone through it quickly and I know there's a lot to take in and they're all sort of merged. David, thank you. We'll, we will take some questions. Um, I think just to be clear, while because I'm now going to go to the uh, uh, regulatory services colleagues uh, and then we'll do the questions. But just to make it clear, the only grant that is available now, which people are applying to, is this local restrictions grant closed addendum, yeah. as it's yeah. called, Guy. Uh, but this is about um, you receiving grants only if you occupy business rateable premises. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So those yep. of you that work from home aren't eligible for this. I think that's one of the key messages, because uh, I know that's been asked. Uh, those other grants will hopefully come into play for that. But this one is only for those that are in premises, which is why David said about the rateable value bans. And it's quite a small amount of money, uh, but it is linked to uh, the rateable value of those business premises that you occupy. So I think, David, that was a great run through. It is very, very complicated. But let's just turn. So everyone, if you want to uh, list your questions, we will try and, and get through those. Let's just turn to Helen Clark, um, who's the commercial services manager, because obviously businesses are trading and obviously the whole thing when we went into lockdown two was again uh, businesses getting their head around um, how they could trade particularly for click and collect and things like that so Helen over to you to take us through some of that if you can thank you okay um, good morning everybody just um, sorry I'm just checking my clock it's still good morning um, yeah unfortunately our side of uh, this equation is equally complicated. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to give you anything very simple here, but I will do my best. And Maria and I are here to answer your questions. Um, basically, as Diana said, this is lockdown two, and it's different to lockdown one, because obviously we have schools open, education establishments are open, and um, the situation is slightly different, but it is still a lockdown. We've got new regulations, they're called the Health Protection Coronavirus Restriction England number four regulations. They only apply in England. There is also associated guidance and that's being produced by the Office of Product Safety and Standards, which is a government body. Um, the regulations stay the same, but the guidance does change and that has caused confusion for people. Um, and we do apologize for anyone has we've confused by this or who has been confused by this, but the guidance from the government has changed basically to reflect, I think, things that they hadn't anticipated when they initially drafted the guidance. So you have got a list of premises that must stay closed. Um, as we've said, discotheques, um, there's certain premises still have to be completely closed. There's a set of premises that are restricted. So all hospitality premises are restricted to takeaway only. Retail largely is now click and collect only. And you have a list of premises that also are permitted to stay open. And that would be things like your supermarkets, post offices, off license, et cetera. Um, let me think what else. I'm trying to think what's going to be useful for you to know, really. So the teams that we have, we've got three uh, teams. We've got a trading standards team, a licensing team, and a food and safety team. 
The food and safety team are now largely advising on health and safety and risk assessments because everybody who's open has to have a risk assessment associated with COVID. We would also be able to advise you on the use of face masks. I know that's been quite problematic for some people, whether or not you can enforce that, whether or not everyone has to have a face mask. So Maria, I'm sure, who's also on the call, would be able to help. She's probably better at face masks than I am, anyway. Um, and we also have a licensing team who are dealing with the licensed premises because uh, there was some debate initially as to whether or not premises would be able to sell alcohol. As you know, before this latest lockdown, there was a limit of 10 p.m., but now it's click and collect only for alcohol, which is again, a little bit problematic as to what click and collect for alcohol actually looks like in reality. The, the other side of the regulations that we're also enforcing is gathering. So we've got the business restrictions part and the gatherings part. Um, and with regard to gatherings, legally you're only allowed to gather for certain reasons. So that would be going to work, education, uh, exercise, as you know, that's only two people, uh, support groups, but that would be for health reasons. Yeah, so I think that probably is a run through of regulations so far. I hopefully I haven't confused people too much. Um, all I would say from our perspective is we are, um, we run over three boroughs. So we're obviously in Merton here today, but we also cover Richmond and Wandsworth. We're trying our hardest to be consistent and as fair as we can because the last thing we want is for one business to be open in one place, but to be closed in another. So we are trying very hard to be consistent, but it isn't possible for us to be in every place all the time. And um, if we if we hear about something where somebody hasn't understood quite what they're meant to do, then just let us know. We, we, we want it to be as fair as we can, given these really quite testing situation that we're in at the moment. Thank you, Helen. And I, I think one thing I'd add to that is that I think your team has really taken an advisory role before compliance. And so I know we all see in the media uh, establishments that have been closed down due to lack of compliance. But I know from the dialogue that I've been having on an ongoing basis with Helen and the rest of that team, they are really taking an advisory role. So I think if you are uncertain, you know, the message is please come forward and get that guidance because it is available. Um, so, um, right. I'm going to sort of cut there because I'm sure we have got loads of questions. Um, and um, I think that's the important thing, isn't it, is sharing the questions because we kind of learn from listening to those, I think. So um, I'm just going right to the back, um, uh, right to the beginning, because we actually had a number of questions come in from people here as well. Um, so there's one, and then I'll come to you as we move down. So the first question we have here, David, is actually about someone that is in the supply chain to a business that is closed. So obviously the business that has been had to close, i.e. a restaurant, uh, well, actually they're, they're an events related business, but uh, they're just saying, would they qualify as for those grants? And, and my view is they might qualify under the additional restrictions grant. Yeah. You may want to say something. Yeah, no, no, I, I think you're absolutely right, Diana. And looking at the, uh, the closed scheme for the lockdown, I don't think they're eligible, um, but certainly um, they could be eligible under the large um, discretionary scheme that the council needs to, to agree. Yes. And there's a similar one here about someone that, that makes window displays. So again, because the, the, yep. the place is closed, they can't, they can't do that. But again, yep. they wouldn't be covered by the grant that's currently open because they don't occupy premises. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a bit like the discretionary grant that went before. That's where some businesses who weren't eligible for the premises related grants uh, because they didn't meet the thresholds, were able to apply. So that's that's the grant that David is uh, saying has to be worked up. It is worked up, but it's got to go through to the uh, cabinet at Merton Council because it's uh, obviously a very large amount of money to be distributed. Um, okay. Diana, can I 
Diana, yeah, can, I just quote, yeah. can I just quote something from the guidance around mm. that one? Um, mm -hmm. We encourage local, local authorities to develop discretionary grant schemes to help those businesses which, while not legally forced to close, are nevertheless severely impacted by the restrictions put in place to control the spread of COVID-19. This could include, for example, businesses which supply the retail, hospitality and leisure sectors or businesses in the event sector. So that guidance or that, that paragraph is actually in the government guidance for the large discretionary scheme. So Merton's cabinet, I'm sure, will be looking at that. Right. So the, the next question, which is from Jessica Gray, I think probably might be similar. But uh, Jessica, are you there to come in with your question? If you unmute yourself, if you are. Hi, okay. yeah, um, I think I think David has just answered that by reading out. Reading out. Um, so hopefully we are an event production business. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, it sounds like we would be eligible under the large discretionary scheme potentially. Jessica, I think that's the first time that I've seen any mention of those businesses that haven't been supported so far um, yeah. in any in any of the guidance that the government have issued. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good to see and like that. I say, Merton has to decide its own policy, but it is there in the guidance. Okay. Yeah. Now, someone else has asked about um, the payments and is it per month? And okay. I think they're one-offs, aren't they? For, for, um, for, the lock, for the lockdown one, it's just for the period, the 28-day period of the lockdown. Now, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the national lockdown, as I was trying to say earlier. If, we, if the lockdown is extended, then... I believe this grant scheme will then extend and they will give us more money. If we go back to tier two, then as I explained earlier, maybe the tier two scheme will come in after lockdown. So it is a little bit up in the air, but the actual payments that we're giving now are just for the 28 day lockdown period. Great, okay. Now we know our theatres have had to close. You didn't mention theatres. No. So Nick, Nick is here from uh, New Wimbledon. Nick, would you like to ask your question? Unmute yourself. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. I don't do technology, Diana. It's too cold. <laughs> especially on a Friday. I am actually in the theatre at the moment. It's really cold and full of spiders, and I don't like it, so I'm going home. Um, no, sorry. Uh, we um, we've not been eligible for any government support so far, other than the furlough scheme. Um, yeah. And I, I, I think usually you listed David a whole a list of um, you know sexual entertainment nights. Yeah. Clubs. Yeah. I'm assuming theatres may well be part of that too. I, actually, Nick, I was messaging my colleague because I don't think that they're listed, but I'll try to get some further guidance because I, I have are theatres allowed to open or were they allowed to open at all? You know, with with restrictions and things like that. We, I don't we, really know uh, on that one. Under, under tier two, we were um, if we could provide social distance, which we can't do here. Um, but obviously in lockdown two, then we can't. So what about prior to that, Nick? And I don't want to just do the one inquiry. What about prior to that, Nick? Were you able to open? We were mandated to close at the start. Um, yeah. And then the rules were relaxed as long as we could do social distancing. Fine, and that's the issue. I, I, the honest answer is I don't know, but we'll try to get some guidance and I'll come back to you, Nick. That's really kind of you. Thanks, David. OK, no problem. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there are a number of well-known theatres, but smaller yeah theatrical type uh, setups yeah. in, in Merton. We do have quite a lot, don't we? So, okay, we've got one here from Henry about click and collect, which I think is a good question, Henry. I'm not clear on that one. You there uh, to ask? Yeah, my question is, are any grants available to businesses which open for click and collect? Because the uh, obviously the income is dramatically yeah. reduced down by 90%, yeah. David. Yeah, Henry, I should I should have perhaps clarified um, if a business is mandated to close, but they change their um, they change their business to try to incorporate click and collect. So, for example, if they were a restaurant, that's their normal business, but they've opened a click and collect service. They're still eligible for a closed grant. Does that answer your question, Henry? Uh, so, I, I, well, my reading of that then is that if you did offer click and collect beforehand, you're not eligible. No. So, I mean, I don't know what your business is, Henry, but I suppose what I'm trying to say is if you're a business that where your normal 
delivery or your normal um, service or business, if you like, isn't click and collect, but you've then incorporated that either now or, or more recently or, or even prior to, to the lockdown, if your, mandate, if your main business is mandated to close, but you're still offering click and collect, then that's fine and you can get that government grant. Yes, that, that covers it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, and actually I see your colleague Helen uh, Clark has uh, come back to the theatre to say that obviously uh, theatres are not allowed to open at the moment because of close, only for closed performances. So that one sounds quite a grey area, David, to me. Yeah. So I think it would yeah. be good to get clarification on that. Wouldn't yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Great, okay. Now we've got another one here, which is from uh, Therapy by Dell. And these are uh, people that operate their businesses from home, but don't pay business rates, but have been required to uh, yeah. close. Dell, do you want to add to that? No, Come that's all. Thanks, Diana. Hi, David. It's Hello. just, it, with all the confusion and different grants, I was just, yeah. well, I know I can't apply for the, the first one that's come out, but yeah. Which one would you suggest? <laughs> I'm hoping, Del, if that's your name, that you can, yeah. that once the council has, has agreed and implemented and started on our, on our, um, I've got to get the name of it right, honestly, you are right, Diana, I mean, these are a nightmare. Yeah, Additional Restrictions are... Grant, which is yeah. a large discretionary grant for 4.1 million, I'm hoping that you'll be able to apply them. Okay. Okay, so because... that's going to be mid-December-ish time. That's fine. Um, it's just that with the previous grants in the initial lockdown one, um, I, I think a lot of home businesses didn't get any assistance. Yeah, at all. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, thank and you. I'm aware of, I'm absolutely aware of that. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I, I mean, uh, I think I, I work with the council on, on the discretionary grants round one. And, uh, you know, it, it was very apparent that certain businesses really have been missed out throughout this whole time uh, to do with thresholds and uh, yeah. type of business, blah, de, blah, de, blah. So I think, you know, there's a very big lobby to support businesses that haven't received any other type of support to get some support under that additional restrictions grants. So that obviously has to go to the council's cabinet. Yeah. They will have a view on that. Um, so as David says, that's the timetable. So it, it's a bit of a waiting game. Yeah. And someone else here, um, Philip Hankers, has asked, is there any guidance on what people would need to uh, provide to be eligible for that grant, David, if you've got okay. your thinking hat around that at all? I so, don't... Yeah. <laughs> um, go on. Probably evidence of the business is running. Probably we'll be looking for evidence of loss of income. Possibly staff employed. Um, evidence of any in the first in the first discretionary scheme, the government were very much putting an onus on accommodation costs. I'm not saying we're going to do that, but there's a chance that we will again. So those types of things. Um, we'd certainly, I think, be looking that there's been an evidence of of uh, a loss of income. Perhaps, perhaps a harder one might be around, because uh, again, in the guidance, they talk about sustaining businesses, maybe a harder one. I don't know whether we would try to look at something along those lines. You know, it could be that where we decide we're going to help certain types of businesses, we won't necessarily pay them everything up front. We may pay them over a period of time, you know, with a, with a, a, a the majority of the payment up front, but then paying it further down the line as well. I, I'm not sure, but those are the sorts of things I think that we will be looking at. Yeah, and I think... Diana, just, sorry, just to say as well, going back to um, what you were saying about the businesses that have missed out. Um, every week I join a, a call with uh, revenues managers across London. Uh, and again, you can imagine grants is at the top of the agenda. And that seems to be a bit of a theme with many of the local authorities that they're trying to help those businesses that haven't had any help at all. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think that's being taken into consideration. There is a lobby through all the uh, re organizations that represent businesses to take this type of thing into consideration. So it is a discretionary grant, but um, yeah, I think hopeful that some of that is certainly taken into consideration, but it's not a given. Um, so I hope uh, 
Philip, that that answered your question, because obviously I asked it for you. So if it didn't, please come in. Uh, otherwise, I'll move on. So we now have one from uh, Love Wimbledon, uh, Helen Clark Bell. Uh, do you want to ask that question, Helen? Yes. Hi, David. Thank you, Diana. Um, it's just about the ARG and those businesses that are located within premises but don't have a direct relationship with business rates. Obviously, it's um, yeah. similar to home-based businesses in as much as uh, yeah. they've not received any uh, grants yeah. previously. Well, well, actually, some of them may have received grants under the original discretionary scheme because we were looking at shared office spaces and shared business units. So some of those businesses did have the opportunity to apply under our, our um, discretionary scheme. Um, but again, you know, I'm, I'm sure that will be considered. Um, but, but if we're looking at those that haven't had any help, yeah. some of them have. Helen, maybe not all of them applied, I don't know, but certainly, and Diana will confirm, we've paid many businesses that uh, either rented accommodation, sorry, rented offices or, or were within other businesses. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. And I think it's fair to say, David, isn't it, that the council will have a detailed list of what has been given yeah, to each absolutely. business. So that, yeah. that would be a reference point, I think. OK, so we now got another one about the additional retail uh, grant, which is very good, from Foundation Brands. Okay. Would you like to ask that question? <laughs> I can't I can't see you in the room. Yeah, um, oh, it's fine. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to know, would the RGB backdated to the first close down since uh, we didn't apply for any grants? Um, we applied for help to the Merton Council. We were told you won't get any help because uh, none of your staff live in the Merton area. So uh, we didn't get any help, but uh, with this ARG, I can see that there is a likelihood and would it be backdated? Okay, so the scheme um, runs, if you, if you like, from the end of the national lockdown through to March 22. So whatever we've got to give out, we will give out during that period. Um, so the money, if you like, just covers that period. So there isn't a, a, a backdate, if you like, but that doesn't mean you can't apply for the grant going forwards. Um, I can only assume that you're, you, you say about there's, you haven't got people in, living in the borough. That wasn't any of the discretionary or government schemes. That could be a, 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 a different application to the business rates team for- It was a hardship to, application yeah, that, that's we not, did. Yeah, so that's something different to these government schemes. Um, that's a Merton decision. Um, these are government grants that we are um, implementing and administering but certainly um, you would you know I don't know what type of business you are I don't know if you've received any previous grants or anything like that but you may well be eligible to apply under the uh, additional restriction grant. Okay great thank you. And, and just there so if we were if we didn't come out of lockdown then David and it, it's continued yeah. these grants will become only relevant when we come out of Lockdown. No, I, I don't think so, Diana. No. I think the way that it read is it it's the, it actually quotes the date, 5th of December or whatever the date we're due to come yeah. out of lockdown. So I yeah. think that scheme will be available for that period. You know, almost, Diana, the period is the start date of it, if you like. I'm not sure is really as relevant as the end date because we know we've got to spend or support businesses through to March 22. Yeah, I get that. I think it's important for businesses that are looking for some support that they know that they could get that when it opens on the yeah, 16th. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll do some comms yeah. and, and hopefully we'll encourage yeah. you and uh, and the yeah. bids to help with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. Now, uh, so, um, yeah, Sarah's answered that. I think, right, that looks like I've got through all the written questions. Um, right, so anyone... Um, so out of interest, because we were just going to do a little poll here, have any of you applied that are on the call, have any of you applied for um, the uh, closed, what I call lockdown two grant, this is where you've, your business premises have had to close, have any of you applied for that so far? And I'm going to say if you go to your... Uh, the bottom screen under reactions, if you could press the thumbs up if you have. 
and see if anyone has applied for that. So it doesn't look like anyone in the room has applied for that so far. So the second question then is, if you are in the room and you think you are eligible, are you now clear that you can apply? So thumbs up on that. And there must be some in the room. Oh, there you go. There's a couple. <laughs> a couple. OK. So, yeah, I think, you know, it, the, the straightforward grants, you, people can get their head around a bit easier, more easily. Yeah. It, it's these uh, discretionary ones that yeah. I think, and also because we have so many businesses that have fallen through yeah. the cracks yeah. in terms of any support at all, yeah. that um, obviously people, rightfully so, are very interested to see whether they'll be eligible for any support this time around. So has anyone got any other questions that they would like to ask or points that they would like to put forward? To anyone? There's a question from Callum Bush in the chat. Right. Sorry, Callum. I... Do you want to come in and ask that question, Callum? Yeah. Callum, are you there to ask that question? If not, I will ask it then. So a warehouse-based business here, we can probably all read it. Uh, that because they weren't retail facing uh, and their rateable value was uh, above the threshold. Uh, so these are kind of yeah. um, slightly larger businesses that obviously yeah. fell through the cracks because they were above that £51,000 rateable value threshold. Di yeah. Diana, I think that's, uh, by the sounds of it, typical of this morning, isn't it? One of those businesses that hasn't had any support um, mm -hmm. and... You know, hopefully under the ARG, once the council's policy has been agreed that, you know, we'll be able to help some some more of those businesses out there. Um, and it'd be interesting, Diana, if you don't mind, would, it, would you be able to ask that same question about businesses that might apply under the ARG? Because I'm getting the sense that maybe that's where the real interest is. Let's do that then. So hands up, everyone, if um, using the reactions, if you think you would like you'd want to, you think you might be eligible under the sort of broad brush that we've done or you really feel that you need support under that additional restrictions grant and there's going to be loads yeah. i would say yeah, Let's yeah. Just say I... some coming forward yeah. yeah yeah it makes sense doesn't it yeah it does it does okay thank you thank you so uh here, Juliet Carr from uh, Paper Poms has asked about contact details into your team to get the support. Um, David, have yeah. we got that on the slide at the end? I don't know. I know you've done that before. Uh, Diane, I can I can put my email address there, and, and I may not respond directly, but I can get somebody to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just seeing if I can. Everyone. Yeah, I just type, I'll type my email address in there, okay? And then, like I say, if people want to email me, I'm, I may not be able to respond, but I'll make sure that somebody does. That's great. Thank you, David. And I think um, Del has asked about these timeframes of... Um, we, we'll all be keeping an eye on that, uh, Del, certainly the Chamber and the Business Improvement Districts. And um, actually, you can also, you know, register on the, on the Council website to see the Cabinet papers yeah. and get the alerts of what has been approved by Cabinet. So I know I, I, I get that. So I would get an email the day after Cabinet that tells me what has been approved and what the papers were so any that's that's all part of the local authorities accountability so any of us can do that but we will certainly keep an eye on that and and get the information out to you and i know that the council will be updating their website very promptly and the council are also doing newsletters out to businesses now which i'm sure will include that as well we have uh Sarah Xavier from the Future Merton team at the council here. I mean, all of that's right, isn't it, Sarah? Anything you want to add to that? No, you're absolutely right, Diana. Um, as soon as we know any information, we will pass it on. Um, it's in our interest to get it out there as soon as possible to you so that you can respond, you can apply for grants if you're eligible, but also just so we can tell you what's happening 
um, so everyone is aware and, and remains safe and um, is following the guidelines that we've been set by government. Um, and and um, I, can I just say as well, you know, um, I'm getting lots of emails directly as well. And apologies if I'm not responding very quickly, but we are, um, this is creating a lot of work, you can imagine, across the council, but we are trying to respond to everybody individually with their requests. So, so, so please do just bear with us. It all takes a bit of time. Um, guidelines comes out um, bit by bit as well. So we, we, we are trying to get that message out as soon as we can. I think I, I'd just add to that, that the message um, through since the start of lockdown at the very beginning, uh, the Chamber, the Business Improvement Districts and the Council have worked, I would say, very cohesively yes. to support businesses. So obviously the Council at the end of the day is the people that are dishing out the, the money but um yeah that whole communication so you know we've had uh people and i know the business improvement districts have had uh, their uh, businesses asking all these questions so it's just as all working really as one to try and get those answered so um that that's really how i see it and i know it's incredibly difficult if you've had no support at all um and as I say, uh, a big lobby on that to see if that discretionary grant can meet at least some of, of some of those shortfalls. So, but there is only so much money. Uh, the four million pounds, because it goes through to March 22, uh, 2022, I would say that's it. But you know, who knows? We don't know, do we? But it seems a long time, doesn't it, for a four million grant to be uh, spread over. Um, so, um, yeah, it's kind of watching this space and keeping in contact, hopefully attending things like this where you can ask very specific questions, because it, I, I really do think the way is the descriptions of those grants, actually, that are confusing. The actual uh, detail within them isn't, but it's, it's understanding which grant you sort of fall in and in a, a month's time, even remembering the name of that grant, I would say. Um, so, yeah, we've got one, oh, Helen again asking about the closing date here for um, the current uh, local restrictions grant, which is the closed one, I presume, Helen, you mean there? I can't yeah, see. Th there, is no, there is no closing date on it. It's just open, uh, Diana. As I say, we're expecting 1,300 odd applications. So, so there's no closing date on it because it's a national one. If people are eligible, we pay it. Um, whereas with the yeah. yeah, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, interestingly, I think some businesses feel that they have missed out on grants. So my recollection of the first grants is they were applied automatically. You did that through the business rates collection. Oh, so the original, yeah. so the original retail and small business grants, um, we tried to identify the businesses. We emailed them, but they had to complete a data capture form so that we could make them their payment. But although that opened, I'm going to say, I don't know when it was now, April or May, mm. the government didn't actually close that scheme until the end of September. Um, so businesses had, you know, five, six months to apply for that. I don't know whether this will be quite as long, but because it's a government scheme, there's no sort of limit at the moment on the time frame. Why we put a, a period, if you like, or an application period on the discretionary ones is so that we can get the applications in and assess how much we need to pay. And if we wanna pay, or if sort of the qualifying criteria means we're paying out more than we got funding, we may have to proportionately reduce everybody's award. So that's why the discretionary schemes, we have a set application period and the government scheme, we don't. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's great, thank you. Um, right, we've got a couple of people here with their hands up, so Marjan. Are you there to ask your question? Yes, hi, good morning, good afternoon, sorry, lost the time. Uh, good afternoon, Diana, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hi, hi, uh, my question is about, um, um, actually uh, last time I applied for the discretionary grant through Merton Council and uh, on the second phase, and actually my application was successful, and I, I really, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I'm sure you're aware I operate at rented facilities across different boroughs, including Merton Borough. 
Uh, my question is about this discretionary grant, because this discretion grant, what I noticed that every borough, they got their own way of operating, although there is a government guideline. Um, is it going to be a still, do you think, available to the people like me that they have got a um, cross borough operations? So not fully yeah. operating in Merton, but still in Merton. And yeah. if that's going to be the case, do you have any idea about what the criteria area for qualification of the application is going to be. I know I'm thinking ahead a lot, but yeah, okay. I thought I'd maybe ask a question now. Thank yeah. you. So, uh, I mean, it's good that we helped you in, in phase one or phase two of the discretionary schemes. Um, and obviously your, your, the way your business run then didn't stop you being entitled. So that cross borough operation shouldn't affect anything. Um, at this stage, it's, it, I, I genuinely can't really say what, what, help we may be offering to businesses that have already received some of the grants, whether it be the discretionary grants or um, the, the government retail and small business grants. I mean, what I would say is, is keep an eye on our website. Um, it's just a really difficult question. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I just don't know. I think I've just come in on that, David. I mean, one of the things I think that was kind of taken a bit into account, wasn't it, in the first discretionary grant. So that's one to watch, I suppose, yeah. whether that is still a question that is asked in, in this round, because uh, it was asked in that in that last so, round. Uh, David, do you think it's going to be again phase by phase in a way it was last okay. time? So, so I think because I think it's difficult, it would be difficult for the council to come up with one scheme now, uh, uh, one policy now in such a short period of time to distribute four million pounds i think that's a really big challenge you know as diana said with, with some of the discretionary schemes maybe there were certain groups that we missed out i wouldn't be surprised if it's done in phases and maybe we do a phase one and then we spend a little bit of time reflecting on are we still missing businesses are there still people out there that, that we're not supporting my feeling is it may be spread over the year and two months rather than everything paid in one go Okay, thank you. And I think we have one final question from Philip Hankers. Yeah, if you unmute. Hi, um, just really, can you just explain the process? You talk about the cabinet um, drawing up a plan. Who actually then, um, is that plan then dealt with by your department? Uh, um, and is there an appeals process if we apply and it's rejected? What's uh, so we we okay. we're an events company. Yeah, so sure. We, we, we've been out totally outside the loop. Yeah. This company, we've lost sixty five percent of our staff. We're already yeah. talking about more more redundancies. We are absolutely. You're talking about December. It could be too late. Yeah. Um, how a cabinet decides who then reviews the application and is there okay. an appeals process to that application? Okay, so cabinet will agree um, the policy. Hopefully, I'm sure they'll agree it on the 7th of, of December. I don't know what I'm saying hopefully. I'm sure they'll agree it on the 7th of December. Then there has to be a seven day call in where that cabinet can de decision can be challenged by um, other groups, other parties within, um, within the council. So other um, political parties. Once that call-in is finished, then that policy or decision can be implemented. So hopefully come the 14th of December, we can start to implement that decision. What we're also reliant on, Philip, is a solution from our system supplier that will enable us to make the process for you applying and us making those awards as simple as possible. But I'm hopeful that come around, as I said earlier, about the 16th of December, we'll be able to go live with an application process. At the minute, I think we're looking at possibly a 15 day application window. And for the reason I gave a minute ago, we need to have that window so that everybody can apply. You know, it's, it's not a first come first served. Everybody needs to get that opportunity to apply. Then once that application window is finished, we will look at the, the applications. We will, what, what we sort of do is we do a, a red, green, amber process those where they clearly don't meet the criteria, red, those that are, are green and amber are likely to go to a panel. That panel, 
although that decision is still to be made, I think that panel will consist of three council officers and hopefully two partners. The ultimate decision is the Director of Corporate Services. Because it's a discretionary scheme, the council doesn't have to offer an appeal process. But what we will do is we'll engage with businesses, and we did before, explaining our decisions, trying to capture as much information as you can give us to help make that assessment. I think perhaps the other thing, um, Philip, just to get some, um, you know, so that businesses understand the four million pounds goes over the long period with, you know, and I know some big businesses have lost a lot of money, but the grants, the approach we took in, in the original phase was that, that in many instances, we paid smaller grants so that we could support more businesses. So I suppose I want to get um, perhaps a little bit of uh, manage expectations a little bit that businesses, I very much doubt will be receiving large grants. And, you know, and, and when I mean large, I mean larger than 25,000. That was the grant level that we were paying under the retail grants. That was the maximum grant we paid under the discretionary grants. So I think a little bit of an expectation, you know, I, and I fully appreciate some businesses have lost hundreds of thousands of pounds, absolutely, but the council hasn't got the level of funding to perhaps support some businesses as much as they may want to be supported or think they should be supported. I hope that helps. It's probably not no, the no, answer you're looking it, for. It, it does, and I, um, you know, our expert, uh, my expectation is anything will help. Um, you know, um, at the moment, nothing, <laughs> anything is better than nothing. Um, if it covers the rates bill, fantastic. Um, yep. You know, um, and you've also explained the time frame. Obviously, we've got Christmas and that, mm. in that time frame. So when you're talking about a um, 15 day window, yeah. You're probably talking longer than fifteen days. No, no, one percent no, is not going to factor in. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. So I've sort of extended it a little bit to take that into account. So the plan is it'll be fifteen days open. The application will be online and open for fifteen days um, for businesses to apply. Um, you know, and we will get as much comms as we can out there um, as soon as we can, because you're right. Because if you then extend it then it's just going to delay the whole process and getting grants out to businesses, which is really what we're trying to do as quickly as we can, but meeting all these different sort of restrictions and um, processes and guidelines. So I think and um, I'm, I'm old enough to remember that you used to be able to fill manual forms out. So if the system's a problem, we could always go back to manual and a fax machine. There's still one somewhere I could find. Yeah. Philip, you can, but honestly, I don't think we had any problems with our application form for any of the... 28 million pounds in grants for the retail and small business and the 1.3 in discretionary grants. It's very reliable, it's simple. Um, you know, I test it to make sure it works. And if I can get applications through, I'm sure you can. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thanks for your time, much appreciate it. No problem yeah. at all. So I think, you know, we're saying there, aren't we? Those applications come in, uh, the council will then process and the panel will probably meet that first, second week of January. And I know that the council processed those payments immediately, didn't you, David? Yep, absolutely, Diana. So as soon yeah. as the panel said yes, those payments went out. So yeah, uh, yeah I think um, I'm sure you'll be intending to run it like that. Now, uh, we are up on time. Um, Caroline has posted in the chat the uh, link for you to be able to sign up to the council's uh, update. So uh, that's obviously one that you can do. Uh, I have here just other um, business support um, that has been uh, put out by government that Merton Chamber is playing a part in. That is the government's kickstart scheme, which is about uh, new jobs for young people, and also peer learning networks, which is uh, businesses working together in a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, way through facilitated uh, workshops, really. So uh, if any of you are interested in, in those, please email myself or Caroline. Um, and then uh, we are obviously carrying on with these Reach Out and Connects. If we do need to do any more around uh, the business rates, grants and, and such like we will. But the next one we have is next Thursday, 
which relates to uh, the legislative changes that have come in in lockdown too. Obviously, we went from furlough to job support schemes back to furlough and such like. So that's with uh, legal specialists, uh, employment law specialists from Morrison solicitors. Uh, we haven't touched on uh, the EU transition, which comes into effect from the 1st of January. If any of you have any association with any goods that move in and out of the country, um, then we are running uh, a webinar with the London Chamber of Commerce because they specialise in all those export documents, documents and customs clearance on the 3rd of December. And on a lighter note, uh, if any of you would just like to network with other businesses, uh, we are doing a very early Christmas catch up on the 3rd of December. So uh, please keep in contact. We will keep in contact with you. Our website keeps all of this up to date as well. So um, that's all on there. I know Love Wimbledon have it all on their website as well. So. Um, yeah, I hope, you know, the information is coming out to you. If you're not certain on anything, just please contact any of us and uh, we will do everything that we can to help that uh, inquiry and advice get through. So I think a very big thank you to David and uh, Sarah and Helen and uh, Maria and thanks to Sarah from Merton uh, Council Future Merton team as well. And uh, yeah, let's go away and digest that. Um, the information that David went through is on the council website, but indeed, if, if you do uh, struggle to get your head around um, brackets, closed brackets, uh, addendums and all of that, they really uh, are uh, interesting terms, aren't they? But uh, there we are, it is what it is. Uh, so thank you all very much for joining us uh, just now. I hope it has given you some worthwhile information and a, a path for you to navigate uh, your way through uh, into December and beyond. Um, so, yeah, best of luck, everyone. Keep safe and we'll see you soon. Take care.